Right, I, I would ask you about your priorities, but as the ranking member, you, I, I think you're going to be following the priorities that are set by the Republicans coming in. H how do you th see things shaping up just in terms of spending the budget where the battles will lie? Well, yes and no. Um, uh, Republicans come in with a 222 to 213 majority, which ironically is the exact same numeric majority that we Democrats had for the last two years. However, I've also served under uh, Republican majorities before, in fact, much larger ones. And what tended to happen, whether it was John Boehner as speaker or Paul Ryan then, because of the Freedom Caucus never getting to yes on anything, uh, almost invariably, um, Republican leadership would need Democratic votes in order to pass, must pass legislation, whether it was annual appropriations, raising the debt ceiling, the National Defense Act. Uh, so, in fact, um, we ended up then having a lot of leverage in the minority. And I would expect the same thing would happen now that Republicans return with an even lower majority than they had back in 2014, 2015, when I first served. How, how do you plan to use that leverage? What, what would you ask for as a result for your vote? Yeah, so look, um, uh, practical, common sense measures that we can all get behind. Obviously, the last few years have been traumatic in so many ways. But just looking at this strictly uh, economically and in terms of the markets, we had a dramatic recession that was induced by the pandemic. We in the United States have come out of that quicker than anywhere else on Earth. However, we have had this inflation issue, and no, it has not been transitory, as Jay Powell and others predicted it would be about a year ago. Um, we want to make sure that this growth continues, that a record low unemployment, when I say record low, literally tying a 50-year uh, record in, in terms of uh, the number of jobs added. At the same time, though, as the Fed is raising rates, we have to be concerned that we don't inadvertently fight the last war and end up with a recession in 2023. So I look at my job as the incoming uh, lead Democrat on the Budget Committee, pushing for common sense measures that are good for uh, business, good for workers, and good for the U.S. economy. All right, Congressman, I know in the past you have said that you want to make sure Republicans don't go after Social Security and Medicaid and Medicare, that you want to protect those programs. Um, I know in the past you have also tried to pass legislation that would prevent anybody from uh, holding things up over the debt ceiling. You don't even think we should be voting on a debt ceiling to begin with. You think that should be taken out. Would you use your vote when it comes to the Republicans trying to pass a debt ceiling? Would you use your vote and say, I'm not going to give it to you on this debt ceiling. I'll let the debt ceiling come through unless you promise not to attack Social Security and, and Medicare? So first, we are, um, as I know you know, uh, we're the only country on Earth that even has this antiquated concept of a debt ceiling. A lot of people think it was created in order to force the United States to deal with its debt issue. Um, that's actually not the case at all. That's a, a fairy tale. It's a bit of an accident of history that we even have such a thing as the debt ceiling. Uh, I am deeply concerned uh, that the Republican majority will do exactly what many of them have been saying including presumptive incoming House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, that they will threaten to not raise the debt ceiling at all. Uh, they came very close in August of 2011. Uh, it, it cost our bond rating, um, cost us an extra few billion dollars in borrowing costs, and really had the world on edge. We need to make sure that we avoid that disaster. That is dysfunction. It achieves nothing. We need to step back from the brink. At some point in the first quarter, uh, quarter, Secretary Yellen will have to use extraordinary measures because we'll be right up against the debt ceiling. And then at some point over the summer, uh, those measures will be exhausted. So this is something that, in my view, it's the responsible thing that we tackle now as opposed to later.